you you are supposed to be dead to the world in other words people are falling past you fornication is falling past you marital infidelities they are falling past porno is falling past you you can feel things are passing around because you're a human being but you are still not sensitive to such things i am speaking to you about somebody who is saved and have surrounded your life knowing that you are dead to the world and a life unto Jesus. I am only sensitive to things of God. I am only sensitive to spirit. Why are you so sensitive to any nasty thing passing by? What you need to understand is that you are dead to the world and a life unto Jesus. What is your purity target? So, ladies and gentlemen, with a club offering, let us receive Sir Willie. God bless you so much. And he is the host, president, and founder of PDF. Put your hands together for Jesus properly. Hallelujah. I believe that what Jesus wants to do in your life, he will still do it in your life. Am I speaking to somebody here? Listen to me. For the fact that you were able to pass through the rains and come, it shows your heart that you want to be a better person in this sex crazy generation. It's an indication that if you are somebody who is coming for a more godly lifestyle, God will meet you at the point of your need. I'm not hearing the amens tonight. I believe so much strongly in my heart that Jesus will bless our lives tonight. See this. What is your purity target? Ready, go. One more time. You will need this if you are desirous of a sexually pure life. You will need this. Not I'm talking about. If you are desirous. Except you don't care. Because in actual sense, I'm speaking to three categories of people here tonight. Three people. The first group of people I'm talking to tonight are people who don't know Jesus as their personal savior. Listen, anything goes for them. The foundation for them to build a sexually pure life on is not there. God's presence, God's person, God's power is not there. So for them, anything at all goes for them. Sexual purity is not a possibility for them. They have a free pass. They are the rulers of their own life. So when you talk about targets, what is targets? I live my life as I want and you don't tell me about targets. There are those people who say that for me to live a sexually pure life in this generation is impossible. Highly impossible. For me to be a man and stay with one wife is highly impossible. For me to be a fresh boy, fresh girl, and these girls are coming to me as a fresh boy. Me a fresh old. Me ye be tia. Ye come yo mo e wasi. Ye come three steps. Me ba ne man e boje me so fresh boy. And you want to tell me that I can stay pure? These people don't have any purity target. But listen to me. Once upon a time in Jesus' ministry, he was walking through by the Sea of Galilee and he saw Andrews and the brother. He said to them, I know you are fishermen, but follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So follow me to become. Listen, anybody here under the sound of my voice who don't have Jesus as a personal savior, you trying to live a sexually pure life will continually be impossible because the person to make you become, you don't know him and you're not following him. That's the first category of people I'm talking to tonight. The second category of people are people who have Jesus as their savior, but they are the bosses of their own lives. Listen, we were saved from bondage or we are set free from bondage not to live lives as we want, but as we ought. Let me repeat for free. We were set free from sin and from darkness not to live lives as we want, but as we ought. Jesus with the disciples told them that go to that place you see a donkey with its colt a funumene neba lose them and bring them to me Jesus didn't say that lose them and let them go most of you you have been loosed but we have been set on the loose after being loosed by Jesus but Jesus wants us to be loosed and come back to him give me first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 let's read something there it should be your concern if you have taken Christ as your personal savior because of this. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Listen, if there is any will of God for your life, it's not just about you finishing SHS or tertiary or PhD. It's not just you passing your novdeck, which you have written about four times. If there is one will of God for your life, it's not you going abroad 
it's not even you you trying to be a better person in your career or profession if there's one will of god for your life it's not just having a better marriage if there's one will of god for your life it is that you will be sanctified you'll be a sanctified personality listen open and go point three more poor i'm a what you want to be 18 25 majority of us here are between the age of 20 to 35 according to the online registration we did we have about almost 80 percent of us here between 20 to 35 listen to me if you want one will of god for your life it's not just for god to let you get a fresh boy a, a big man to marry a man with six packs a man would be a beer or mustato if there is one will of god for your life it is that you remain sanctified for this is the will of god your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Move on. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Next one. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in his matter because of the Lord is the avenger of all such. Give me the verse 7. Listen. For God did not call us unto uncleanness but unto holiness verse 8 watch this therefore he who rejects this does not reject man but god who has also given us his holy spirit listen the god who commands the obedience is the god who enables the obedience but from the from the crowd the said you should abstain from sexual immorality he's commanding you at the same time that god who is commanding you is the one who enable you to abstain he said that if you reject this commandment you are not just rejecting the god who commanded it but you are rejecting the god who can give you the ability in this generation where you don't go about looking for sex yourself but sex comes about looking for you you reject the person who enables you and he enables us through the power of the holy spirit you've been set free not to live your own life but to be connected to jesus the next category of people i'm speaking about is people who are saved and they have surrounded their will to god they are saved and they have surrendered their will to god they know that i am dead to the world i am alive unto christ i am dead once upon a time i lived in ashdown and a certain man who was a fuhrer of a very big house we used to play ball inside the man died when the man died they said they have put the man in a fridge i was around nine years eight years I thought that the fridge was the one we use in our house, the deep freezers. Apparently, there was a store, a shop in that particular house where we used to buy things. The moment I heard that the man was put in a fridge, I stopped buying things in that man's place because I thought it was his, his fridge. They have placed the man inside. Until I got to know that the fridge was different from that particular fridge. Everybody say fridge. That's a fridge. My God. See, they said the man was dead. I was sitting there one time and I said, supposing they said the man was dead. Then they brought the man to beg them. Everybody should come and fire past the man. They brought the man around 5 a.m. And the man was there. People were filing past the man. 10 a.m. The man is still there. 12 p.m. They have not gone to bury the man. 1 p.m. The man is still there. The man wakes up and tells the person, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. And Jesus has to tell you, most of you, you are supposed to be dead to the world. In other words, people are filing past you. Fornication is filing past you. Marital infidelities, they are filing past. Porno is filing past you. Jama Jama is filing past you. You can feel things are passing around because you're a human being, but you are still not sensitive to such things. I am speaking to you about somebody who is saved and has surrounded your life, knowing that you are dead to the world. And a life unto Jesus. I am only sensitive to things of God. I am only sensitive to spirit. Why are you so sensitive to any nasty thing passing by? In fact, on our market say we know I am fine. You go group What are what? Listen, listen. What you need to understand is that you are dead to the world. Listen, what you need to understand is that you are dead to the world. And a life unto Jesus. Get will be frame. Frame was say only. But they may come as a match around now. Oh, sorry, who need problem? Because I mean, a bus a sexual issues are may come as a meeting. Me need problem. Me need to be a part. I wrote something in one of my quotes once upon a time. I said that 
The fact that you are married doesn't mean that you don't see beautiful ladies going around. You see them, but you still zip up. We see beautiful women going around, but we still what? Zip up. Because we are dead to the world. Now, what is the target? Yesterday, Real Madrid played Barcelona. I'm not a Madrid fan. I'm not a Barca fan. I am a United fan. We played Chelsea. It was a drawn game. Supposing when they were playing the football match, there was no goal post there. And they were just playing. And imagine what you'd be watching. But you were watching in keen interest because there was a goal post and you were believing say, your team, either Barca or Madrid, was scored that goal. There was an aim. There was a target. There was an object of attention. Anytime we talk of target, it means that there is something you are looking at. It gives you the motivation to do what you are doing. It gives you the focus to do what you are doing and it keeps you in check. Listen, most of us don't have a target. And because you don't have any purity target, there is no motivation to live a pure life. There is no focus to live a pure life. And there is no boundaries, checks and balances to live a pure life. Listen, there must be something you are directing your efforts to achieve. And that is called a target. As somebody with feelings, what is your target? Now, it's either you have a target or you don't have a target. Because sexual purity is glorifying God by applying his principles as far as his word is concerned. Listen, I said that applying his principles as far as his word is concerned. Three standards by which we judge things in this world. Is, is it legal? Is it moral? Is it godly? Ghana has said, so be any obi kobe biyama no yini kunana na era. And for biyama, it's not in the laws of Ghana say, oh kobe biyama ya, why ya, why ya, but culturally, it could be wrong. But now, say, the cultural trends, as a scientist, it's not wrong for them. It, it changes. And listen to me, we cannot fashion our lifestyle as believers using cultural trends and what is legal or not legal. But we must go to biblical principle. We must go to scripture. Stop asking me questions. Don't ask me that question. Let's go to the scripture and then look at it. And he says, Stop asking that question because it's infantile and get to scripture. Stop always trying to make the legal things and the moral things your standard and make the word of God your standard. Because the legal things change. The moral things change. Do you know that a man called Alfred Kinsey did a survey? He did a survey about what sex means. And listen. 95% of people said that if you have sex with a person of the opposite sex and then there is penis vagina contact they call it sex but if there is penis vagina contact and there is no ejaculation it is not sex we have given people the chance to let's know that means that even if there is ejaculation, then you can use a condom so that the condom can, can actually accommodate the ejaculation. That one crap, people can say it is not sex. That is morality for you. People are trying to define things to suit their own whims and caprices and then throw back God's gift of sex back to him. But listen to me. We need to understand that we live in a generation where things are changing. A generation where people don't just go looking for sex, but sex is looking for them. A generation where you can go to the internet and then you will see 10 benefits of pornography five benefits of masturbation and people will download and will read and will masturbate and watch porn a generation where it used to be you know what times it used to be no sex until marriage today it is yes sex if there is condom once there is condom it's allowed before once there is marriage is allowed but today you can have if there is condom a generation which is a contraceptive and a condomized generation. The point I'm trying to say is that we want to have a generation who will be kingdom minded rather than condom minded. So it's either you have a purity target or you don't have a purity target. So those without purity targets, they are the people who see sexual purity to be impossible. And characteristics of such people, they are promiscuous. They are sexually rebellious sexually rebellious anything sex they would do anything to some threesome bisexual unisexual whatever homosexual anything they would do 
no parameters no regard for godliness they are the people who say that use what your mama gave you to get what you want your mother was a channel through which you came to this world it was god who gave you everything and god expects us to be able to use that to glorify his name they are the people who say that sleeping with married men for money or favors is not a crime after all it is all part of hustling they are the people who say that if you sleep with a married man or a married woman it is not anything crime it is part of hustling yeah hustle Timini will be that let me know favor and your hustle and it's a work of swast cement and a concrete you know your hustle you know your hustle we have American English but listen to me if you choose to live a sexually carefree life in this sexual age you find yourself in a sexual cage I repeat for free if you choose to live a sexually carefree life in this sexual age you find yourself in a sexual cage most of us are caged and then we can't come out because we're sexually carefree I pray to God that we will move from being sexually carefree to be being sexually careful amen those with purity targets those with purity targets and the kind of target you have will determine to a large degree how you nav navigate through and then win the battle against sexual temptation now give me the very first one when it comes to the kind of purity target people have what is your goal as far as sexual purity is concerned i say oh i don't want to feel guilty i say me feel bad i don't know me feel bad ah i'm going to be feeling bad okay when you're christian i'm going to be feeling bad they're normal we are christian in us also feel it but no one feel it bad that is abnormal it means that you have a seared conscience your mind cannot actually determine when you do something wrong and you are numbed it's like you are desensitized to anything bad you cannot now differentiate between what i did wrong and what i did right you have a seared conscience such people who say that i want to sin but i don't want to feel guilty you being guilty as a believer is a legitimate indication the holy ghost is giving you that you have sinned and for that matter you need to check what you are doing it's it's something you need to check but if you don't want to feel guilty it means that you have moved to what in neuroscience we call hypofrontality there is a portion of the brain and when it's so you just do anything anyhow it's called hypofrontality such people they sin easily they sin willfully continuously and they sin intentionally almost that's a sharp one and 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 then make cock get with fear the abc abc intentional easily willful and continuous but listen to me guilt can be a stronghold of the devil where the devil can make you feel guilty actually you have confessed the sin with the bonny be two years ago one year ago impact and now can be our deborn you know you've confessed today and the devil holds you on and the devil wants, wants to tell you that what you did god cannot forget i mean forgive you it's a stronghold of the devil and it can lead to you trying to pacify god everybody say pacification or oh, come on say pacification that is where you try to suspend yourself even before the church suspends you and then you're standing i'm sorry Many time problem kakra to move the mom mom pie no member on one two new ones again say a person who in yanko pomo but listen god doesn't need you to pacify him because jesus already did the pacification stop that pacification once you confess and you know that you have confessed genuinely i'm not talking about the confession where somebody will go to the boyfriend's house will go and have sex with the person and will feel guilty will come back and then he's crying kofi raise the key Bakodi <laughs> I'm 
me bane Caramba, piquei Vai pra não Abigail Yes Are you okay? Yes, I am okay My sister, are you okay? Oh, you are sure you are okay? Okay So, when are you coming back? When do you want me to come back? Hey, my sister me shame any ma me no bia. Me shame at his one me no bia. Me too many a one oh one a. O bill so me mo na ma. Na girl he I said that catch the say. Even if you want me to come tomorrow first thing morning, I will come. My dear, you are the type of people who confess sin and then you don't want to move away from the sin, but you still want to not feel guilty. So your reason for not trying to feel guilty is not just because you want to avoid the sin but you want to avoid that thing of guilt going away from me listen to me give me the next slide and let me show you something how many of you have seen this thing on a car that's what before it's called emission warning or engine warning sign the right check under it last week saturday i was with my wife we we're going to a place and i saw i've seen this thing on our car for a long period of time so i took it to a mechanic i said jack I didn't even say free can any because I can't even say better anymore. Because we're free, money free home money. I don't say bra. If free, why you fifty Ghana? And I'm say last year say. I say bra. How do you say? Saw. My main friend secretary number. My secretary number. And I'm say co. Money money free home money. My mouth twenty. I say bra. Yeah. And I'm say money free. They can say in free home. I left the car for them. The guy came. The thing was gone. I say thank you. My mouth thirty. My thirty. I saw so. Thirty. And I'm saying I'm co. Listen. When we drove the car, we go to Abrepo Junction. The thing came back again. I'm saying, ah, I'm going to go to My wife was so furious because, ah, now call me, see, I'm going to go to Abrepo Junction. I called him and said, Masa, I don't know about what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Abrepo Junction. I walked around, it rained around 6.30 p.m. I came back and said, Masa, you're going to go to Abrepo Junction. The guy did the thing again. I asked him, Jack, are you sure the thing is gone? I asked the guy, Masa, I don't know about what I'm going to do. We aim maybe, but a bakrana, a hyena mo fabra. Ye two car ni free Islamic. Eh, the head dem fi ani muha. It's in here. Ena dem esai de. Eh, beto ho. Watch this. The actual problem was not the light. The actual problem was that the engine needed attention. There is a problem with the engine that I need to sort out, but I'm looking at the dashboard. The guilt you are feeling is not a problem, but the problem is a problem which is a problem inside you that needs to be checked. I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want to feel bad. But the real problem, listen, you better sort that problem out. So, if you don't sort that problem, the dashboard will still show this particular key. But I'm talking to people here who have confessed and you need to get something so that you can be able to come out of guilt. Otherwise, the devil will always tell you that you cannot be forgiven. Only boy he died 10 years ago. Still, this man is an imperial Japanese army intelligence officer who fought in the World War No. 2. His name is Hiro ono Onoda. The man fought in the World War II. The World War was ended in August 1945. But the man for 29 good years didn't know and was still fighting the war. 29 years old. Two months after the war was over, they sent his army commander to send a leaflet to the man and tell the man that, you know what, the war is over, so come back to Japan. He was hiding out in the Philippines. He said, you know what, the war is not over because, number one, they are still throwing shots at me. People are still shooting. I can hear shooting, so it's not over. Then, then president of Japan had to send the man in person, his commander. That commander's name was Yoshimi Taniguchi. He sent this man to go personally and proclaim to the man that I order him to leave the war front and come back home. It was then he believed. Most of you, what you need is not deliverance. Most of you, what you need is not you trying to roll on the floor. What you need is for us to proclaim and for you to get the revelation that Jesus has done something for you and I proclaim to you, Isaiah chapter 60, 61 verse 1. He says that to proclaim liberty unto those that are held captive. Your mind has been held captive by the world for so long, I mean a time. 
for four months, for six years. You've done some nasty things, but I came to proclaim the word of God unto somebody that Jesus has subpoenaed me to come to you and tell you that come out of that guilt and stand free in the liberty where Jesus has made it free. Shout amen. The next goal of people is that God, I want you to remove the temptation. If only I will not be tempted. All right, the temptation is soon. Eh? Oh, God, I saw the cross, I saw the cross, we are tempted. All right, the temptation is free. I will say, God never promised to take away temptation. He promised to bring a way of the escape. James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. Don't let anyone under pressure to give in to evil say, God is trying to trip me up. God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. The temptation to give in to evil comes from us and only us. We have no one to blame but the leering, seducing flare up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby. Sin. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. Listen, the temptation you are going through is normal to everybody. It is the same for everybody, just that the quantum might change, the method might change. If girls enter tower, somebody need to hear your corruption and any temptation. Everybody is going, I'm going through some things, you are going through some things. And listen, it's not God that is making you go through it, but God says that I can give you a way of escape. Give me first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who stands, or let him who thinks he stands, take it lest he fall. Temptation is not only for those who are weak in the Lord, for the stronger in the Lord you are tempted. No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful. But God, everybody say, but God. Oh, come on, say, but God. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. It is common to Seul. It is common to Frank. It is common to your pastor. It is common to that archbishop. It is common to everybody you see. All those you see in Clerica. It is common. What you are going through as a, a mere member is still common to them. But God is a faithful God. He is a faithful God who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able I mean, to, to stand. But with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may endure. Listen to me. Some of us, we bring the temptation our own way. There are some things you cannot remove, but you can ignore. You don't see a billboard, a big billboard there with a lady's bottle showing, and you say that all the owners of the billboard come and take the billboard away because I am tempted by that billboard. No. You just don't have to give attention to it. But there are some of them you can actually remove from the way because they are triggers to some other bigger things. Listen to me. For anybody with a pornography issue today here, one answer I give to that problem is I know you are using an Android phone. It might even be better than some of us what we are using. But if you want to come away from that pornography, discard that phone and get a young phone. The first thing they will say is, may I? That's what they say, may I? But after two days of not going through WhatsApp, not going through Facebook, not going through Twitter, not going through Instagram, they feel awkward, they feel uh, redrawal symptoms sets in and then they don't know what to do, they go back for the phone. And then the moment they go back for the phone, the very first place they go to is a pornography site. And then they will, they will masturbate with it for three continuous days. They do it and they say, I can't come out, out of it. Listen to me. There are some things you need to remove from your way. You don't just have to ignore them. And one of them is taking the thing out. What kind of chat are you having at night? Only boy chat. That's a chat. Oh, they won't chat beyond. People can chat. Joseph told Potiphar's wife that I will not do this great wickedness against my God. What he saw to be a great wickedness, we see to be a great wickedness. Oh, me weakness, lady. I am my head. weakness, I wickedness. Joseph fled. We, we fled. He fled. We, we fled. We fled with everything that comes to us. Joseph decided to run away because of the fear of God. We will stay because of the grace of God. The next goal of people is I want to say no to temptation. So, you have a girlfriend. 
you visit and she's in skimpy dress, you think that you are Samson and you are still there. The last time I checked, Samson was going to Timna with the parents and they saw a big lion and the lion was killed like a goat by Samson. The last time I checked, Samson was able to hold about 3,000 foxes, hold their tails together, set lamp on it, and then burn the, the, the fields of the Philistines. The last time I checked, there were some group of people who had come to bind Samson. Before they woke up, Samson has taken the whole country gate upon his back, and then he has taken it away. They were shocked in amazement. This is Samson, and was brought down by Delilah. The man was stronger. The man had capacity. The question is, who are you? The last time you were killing a mosquito, the neighbors at your place, they heard. Okay? I was going for hack, and your money, but your force. Because a hack, and your money. Oh, because your money, but your force. My do shut that up. Dear man, hagi a hagi by Yemeno, maybe I'll hagi a enyo, Koswa hagi. But me was school, me social studies master. Near friend of Quade, some of Quade, Trey, first of all, school, the first topic, eh, knowing yourself. That topic in the Mendasukai, and I know myself. And I check that. Anytime I decide to do the hagi like people do, things are not working properly in me. Now, to me, then, hugging becomes a sin. Even though, generally, hugging is not a sin. What am I talking about? Know yourself before you begin to do some things that you ask. That is it a sin? Say, Uli, it's me hugging over my money and my sister, you are immature. Oh, hugging me, and what happened? If you hug and you have sex, then don't, don't hug. It doesn't mean that generally hugging is a sin. What about kissing? Can we kiss? We go preach you up church be. We preach you 40 minutes. Me, you and I give you a man and sasso. Osofu. Question. Ask your question. Osofu, why are you upon your mission? Osofu, okay? Adibu, I'm going to ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What be preach you come out? Sexual purity. Why I was say, May you know, Bianna. What's your move here? Crammy and Conan Ajo. May you test, 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 test. I know it's unknown. I'm going to say, No, no, no. And Kakisi ya kanke debeti ya koto sono so sono. Usi ye nyaye. Iti ya diye paani ya beye ya beye de. Relationship ya beye de na ye de. Listen to me. We are not in any premarital relationship to make our body sweet ass. We are in that premarital relationship to give glory to Jesus. I better model Jesus to my partner rather than model Satan to my partner. Listen. Don't start it if you can't finish it. Stop arousing sexual hungers you cannot righteously satisfy. And Kofi can say more radio, so I think it's true. I must say, time I Christopher, I'm a bunu boy, jamaan pa, time I'm a programmer here, I'm a programmer here. Oh, my Kofi, my day be she get day. Ya ba church, ya ba conference, ya ba seminar. Ah, I'm a Kofi, time I'm a boy, jamaan pa, it's that time. Because you know why? When we finish like this, they think they are on fire. My sister, I will, I will, I will escort you to your house. It is 9 p.m. I will escort you, my sister. And then he was caught. And then when he is leaving, the sister will go like, oh, let me to escort you small. And then she too was caught. And then, oh, you two are going. Let me to escort you. See, he too was caught. And then, oh, and then they were caught, escort, escortees. I am speaking to all the escortees and the escortes in this place. Let there be some sense in your head. Let there be some sense in this place. Let there be some sense in your head. And go back to your house. Rather than for you to do the escortings. And also, oh, that yet they say, I say, you pay more to be numb. You go and sit down. And then this boy thinks that he can say no to temptation. And then he's a married man. But he still thinks I can still go to this girl's house and say no to her advances. And then begin to speak in tongues. Shabadada. And then the ABCBC. Magu Dayada. Agili Mishotete. This sister will give you more. And then this guy, who is not so much wise enough, he doesn't have so much wit. It's still there praying in tongues. Sagadi Maloshe, Adiate. I say, brother, do you mind sitting down? I don't have a chair in this in this house, but I have a bed. You can sit on the bed. This brother thinks that he can still be on the bed and say Maduka Dabasha, and then he sits on the bed. And this brother is still Shadi Manakande, Adu Te 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 Te. And then this sister eventually makes the sexual advance, and the tongues which was Madu Te Te becomes Madu. Madu, the tete is gone. Madu, the tete is gone. Eventually, the do will go. You hear? Ma, ma, 
ma. Eventually, you don't hear them, ma. You hear, mm, mm, mm. E hono asema yede, es. I want to be practical with you tonight. Oh, coffee and one cash here now. Can I say, let's try, let's stop trying to be to be spiritual about some things. I can I can pray. I, I, this is the, listen, don't be a sexual atheist. You were atheist for and you were a sexual atheist. They are the people who think say, irrespective of how sexually careless I become, I will still say no or stand strong to the sexual atheist. Listen, you fall. Sexual temptation doesn't respect your pay degree. Your title, your prayer, your whatever, what it, it respects obedience, total obedience to the word of God. Give me the next slide. My last slide, actually. My goal is that I want to honor God. Listen, this is the very best one you can think of. The reason why I'm not doing the things people do is not because I can't do it, but I want to honor uh, God. The fundamental, gigantic secret to sex is that because sex was created by God, sex is good. Listen, because it was created by God, it is what? Good. Now, because of that, the only thing we can do to glorify God and tell God that God, we appreciate you for your goodness is to live in the sanctity of our sexuality. Now, find Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 for me and let me close. I want to honor God. I want to honor God. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I'm a master, where is my reverence? Listen. If you call God your father, our father who art in heaven, that's how you pray. If God says, if God is saying, that if you say I'm your father and you are my son, what is the honor you are giving me? If you say I'm your Lord and then you are my servant, I'm the master, where is the honor you are giving me? We honor God by the way we live our lives here on earth. We don't honor God just because we took Christ as our personal savior, but by the way we live our lives. Give me first Samuel 2.30. First Samuel 2 30. I want us to read this thing in chorus. Ready? Go. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed, your house and the house of your father. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, I will despise. The last portion again. For those who honor me, read, I will honor. And those who despise me. Listen. People wonder why you are so fresh in your skin. You have fresh eyes, you have body, and you have everything that makes a woman a woman. You are, you are, you are supposed to be in a beauty contest, but you are not in. You are, you are beautiful, you are, you are handsome. People wonder, why are you still holding on to your purity at the age of 35 years? You are still a virgin, you're not married, you're still a virgin. The answer is because I want to honor God. You are a married man, you are, you are handsome, but you are still glued to one wife. Don't you think that if you drink one soup, Try another thing. I said, I want to honor God because human beings are not soup. Human beings are not a bank account. So I want to honor God. They are still wondering why you have dated this boy right from JHS. You are still dating the person you are in the tertiary. But even Nenum Pam Pam It is because I want to honor God. I must speak to some people here who understand that the reason why I'm not doing the things the world is doing is because it is God I want to honor. Because God says that if you honor me, if you honor me, if you honor me, God will honor you. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I believe that for you honoring God with your body, some things you would have struggled to get them, God will give them to you on a silver platter. For some money you've been struggling to get, God will give them to you. Your friends buy 
pass God. They went to some married men for those money. They are in school. You are in the house selling water, selling tomatoes. God said, you know what? You are not in school yet, but I will honor you. Somebody is doing something nasty somewhere, but you are still intact. You are still there saying that, God, I know I'm struggling. I need money. The man says, before I get the money, he wants to sleep with me. I need promotion, but they say, before I get the promotion, they must have me have sex with them. My girlfriend has been harassing me. I've dated you for good two years. You have not even kissed me before. Are you a man enough? Yes, I am a man enough. All that I'm doing is that I want to honor God. How come I am in the university but still not had sex before? But still not doing nasty things? It's because if I honor God, God will honor me. I'm not speaking to some people here tonight. I'm not speaking to some people here today who understand that when I honor God, it doesn't matter what happens to me. Listen, you are 34 years not married, not even a boyfriend listen i am honoring god because god will honor me it doesn't matter what people say it doesn't matter what the world say i am honoring god because god says if i honor him listen the holy spirit just spoke to me he said holy do you understand what you are saying to them i have not found understand what he said and then i get ready for me get ready for that song for me Listen, he just spoke to me here. He said, Did you hear what he said? If you honor God, you honor me. He said, He just told me that the same honor you give to God, He takes that same honor like God Himself and brings that honor back to you. So it is God's honor you have and not just my God. My God, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Savior, quickly, quickly run up front and let me pray with you. You, you know that you know Jesus. Quickly run up front right now. Power I'm not talking about sex, but you know that you need Jesus in your life. Quickly, do it power to say. Do it quick. Do it quick. Listen, don't, don't wait for somebody to push you. There is do it quick. Come on. One Come on. You know you need Jesus. I can see some people coming. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for them there as they come. Is only 